Hi everyone! Welcome back for our December Steam Saturday video and I'm so excited to do this one with you guys because this actually has a Christmas theme. Merry Christmas everybody! And it's so cool because it actually is all about engineering. We're gonna use engineering today to build a gumdrop Christmas tree. And before we can get there, I'm gonna go through what you need to do this. First thing is you need some gumdrops or some spice drops. That's, that's what's gonna make it look really Christmassy and even smell really, really good. You're also going to want a ruler to measure how, or a tape measure to measure how tall you can actually get your tree before it starts leaning over or falling over. Another thing you're going to need, of course, is toothpicks or barbecue skewers. If you have those because your family barbecues, you can use those. They're bigger, they're longer, they're thicker. They may even work better for you. And you're either going to need a paper plate, or in my case, I'm going to use a piece of paper because it gives me more coverage, or you can even use a placemat because this gets really messy and really sugary, really sticky, and the sugar goes everywhere. So make sure you have that before you start. And we need to talk about a little bit what engineering actually is. And specifically, we're talking about structural engineering, the building of stuff. And that means building structures using math and science. And there are even more types of engineering that you can look up if you're interested. So I'm going to start by building the base of this guy. And I'm actually gonna use some leftover spice drops that I already have open to start doing this. This is so cool. I'm gonna dump out a couple of them. Exciting, exciting. All right, and you want to, I've discovered, you want to make sure that you keep your spice drops or your gum drops standing up and keep them all turned in the same direction because I built, oh, I pre-built some stuff and tried to build some stuff and I did not have my gum drops in the right direction and it just didn't work. So you want them standing up looking like this and we're gonna start by building a simple triangle with the toothpicks and the spice drops. And we're gonna stick, oh, come here. And it's always hard to keep the spice drop that's on the top from being all crooked, but this is what you should have first. This is your first triangle. And then you're going to do this again. Okay. Make sure guys, when you do this, that you actually stick your toothpicks into the sides of the top one. That's one way that I kind of messed up a little bit because I'm brand new at doing this and I'm not very structurally minded. So we're gonna put this one in here like this and put this one here and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. You're gonna start with something that looks like this. And you can use, if you really wanna make this look Christmassy, just use red, white, and green spice drops or red and green gum drops and it will look really, really, really fun and cute. Here we go. And then we're gonna connect these two like this. I'm chasing toothpicks everywhere, guys. So it's probably a good idea to have them in a dish, which I don't. And you're gonna wanna make sure you get in there and get this stuck in there really, really good, but you should start with something that looks like this. This is the bottom part of your base, okay? Now, now we're gonna get tricky because I have to build the top part. And we're gonna just keep going with more triangles here. And you should, while you're doing this, 
you may want to think about which shapes are going to be the strongest. Are they squares? Are they parallelograms? Are they triangles? Are they rhombuses? You know, which shapes are going to be the strongest? Which ones are going to help you the most? And also, because you do not have to do this the way I'm doing it, Think about how wide your base needs to be. If you want your tree to stand up really, really tall and you don't want it to lean over, how wide does your base need to be? And you know what? I didn't do, I didn't put the toothpicks in this other one correctly. So, I put them in the bottom instead of in the sides because I want these, you want your gumdrops to be flat. You want them to stand on their flat bottom because if they don't, your, your design is going to roll. And that is an, another interesting point about engineering. These guys, all of your gumdrops are actually functioning as the joints of your structure. They are what keep parts of a structure from rolling past the parts next to them. And if you don't have your gumdrops on their flat bottoms, you will have parts trying to roll past each other. And if you don't have the toothpick stuck far enough into the gumdrop, the same thing is going to happen. You're going to have parts rolling past each other. So when you get done with your base, it should look like this. You should have a hexagon, a hexagonal base. It should look just like this because that's, well, mine will. And you could choose to do something different. In fact, see what happens if you try to go straight up. See what happens if you have a smaller base. See what happens if you have a larger base. What happens if you have a base that's a big triangle? You know, you could do this any way you want to do it, but I am actually starting with a hexagonal base here. And the next part we're gonna do is going upwards with triangles. And all of your gumdrops for this next layer will have, if you do this the way I'm doing it, you'll have two toothpicks in each gumdrop. And so just be prepared for that. Now then, I have something that looks like this. But you see how these gumdrops are leaning into each other? Now what I have to do is put kind of braces in there to hold them up, to hold them apart correctly. And I'm going to the gumdrop that is, that the gumdrops that are across from each other. That's what I want to do. I want to make sure the toothpicks are in the gumdrops that are across from one another. And if you're really adventurous, you could try to do some of this with marshmallows or grapes, but Gumdrops work really, really well, or spice drops, because they're so dense. Um, okay, I see one that I forgot. I think, did I? No, okay, they're all anchored. But these two layers are actually the bottom layers of my tree. And let's see how tall this is in inches. Right now, uh, 
it's about three and a half inches tall right now. But let me show you guys something else. Because this is my finished tree. And it's actually standing up on its own. It's a little leaning at the very top, but let's see how tall this guy actually is. Oh my goodness. This guy is actually a little over eight inches tall, but I'm betting you guys can make structures and trees that are even taller than this one, as long as you have plenty of stuff to do that with. And for those of you out there who are feeling very adventurous, you can actually try to build a structure that's not necessarily tall, but try to build a structure with gumdrops and toothpicks or spice drops and toothpicks that is strong enough to hold up a book. Think about like a dictionary or if you've got an old phone book or if someone has a textbook, anything that's heavy, you know, a yearbook, anything that's really, really heavy, try to build a structure that will hold up a book, a really heavy book. Um, it's really, really, really fun and challenging to do. And when you do that, you have to consider both force and pressure. You have to consider any little movement or any little thing that's gonna change the position of a structure, change anything inside of a structure. The only force we're dealing with here is gravity. But when you really talk about uh, structural engineering, you have to deal with weather. You have to deal with earthquakes. You have to deal with you know tornadoes and hurricanes and even snow and all of that. You have to deal with all the forces that come in on a structure, all the pressures that bear down on it, and you even have to deal with the weight of the structure itself. You have to deal with something called a load, and loads can be live, like people, and furniture in a house or in a building because this is part of a structural load. I'm part of a structural load. All the patrons that are here at the library every day, they're all part of that. But there's also something called a static load or a dead load, which is the weight of the structure itself. Like the weight of all the materials used in this building, the weight of all the materials used in your house, all the materials used in the roof, the weight of the house or the building itself. And you have to consider all those loads when you're building a structure that will actually hold up, that will hold up when you put a book on it and that will just hold up in general. And it's really, really, really cool when you think about that. And there are some questions to ask yourself while you're building this. That's why I suggested having a pencil and paper one is, like I said, what shapes work best for holding things up? How wide should your base be? Does the width of the base, how big the base is, make a difference in how tall you can get your tree or how strong you can get your structure? Um, and then if your tree collapses or if your structure collapses, what parts actually stayed in one piece? You know, what parts fell apart? what parts stayed in one piece, and how can you use all of this information, like what fell apart, what didn't, how tall you were actually able to get it, what parts leaned in on each other, how can you use that information to make a bigger, stronger, taller tree, or a stronger structure to hold up your books? And another thing, if you really wanna go for it, pull out your kitchen timer or use the stopwatch on your phone to see how, if you can build something in a set amount of time to see how big or how strong or how tall you can get it in a time challenge. And that is gonna make it really, really, really fun. And before we go, I need to show you guys some of the books that we have just in case you're more interested in buildings and structural engineering. This one, I Want to Be a Builder, is more for our younger kids, but it goes through the basics of building and engineering, and it is in our nonfiction section, and it's really, really good for a very beginning read about building. So is this one. This is Christy Hale's Building Up from the Build section of the Easy Readers. I've used this one for a Lego story time. It is really cute 
for the youngest kids. And then for our kiddos who are a little bit older, this one is also in our nonfiction section. This is Civil Engineering, the Science of Structures. It's in our 624s. This actually goes through the job of being a civil engineer and what they do. It's actually what my uncle is. Um, he does some really, really cool work. And this one is one that I just happen to love anyway. The Science of Buildings and Tunnels, The Art of Engineering by Ian Graham. This is one of my favorite little engineering books. This is also in the nonfiction, the kids nonfiction here at the library. It is awesome. If you are interested in learning more about structures and engineering and buildings, we've got plenty of resources for you. And I can't wait to see what all you guys come up with and how cool your trees are and how colorful and how big and how tall you make them. I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas and a very happy new year. And I can't wait to be back with you in January for a whole new semester of STEAM Saturday videos. Happy building, you guys. Bye.